23 August 2022. This is episode 39 of This and That and What a Fuck. And uh, we have got some stuff about NATO, Lithuania, and an uh, interesting story from Medvedev. And then there is a bit more on this Russian hate issues. That is something that is really disturbing to me. But let's start with this one. This is a graph, and I suggest you must stop and pause the video if you want to find your own country there. Number of sexual partners, and I have placed a red dot against South Africa there. This is scary. Uh, how true it is, I don't know, but it is quite disturbing, I think. And now we're in the Balkans. The Latvian army will save on water, electricity and heat. Defense Minister Artis Pabrix is preparing an order on large-scale savings measures in the defense sector, starting with heating, electricity and ending with maintenance work. What can you say? And the madness just continue. And more from Latvia. The Latvian foreign ministry goes into darkness. The facade of the ministry building will no longer be illuminated due to expensive electricity. And how stupid can people be? But it seems to me that Europe is dead set focused on going back to the Stone Age. And then we get to Lithuania. The Lithuanian portal or LRT reports that more production facilities in the country will have to shut down on Wednesday evening due to exorbitant electricity prices, which will reach 4 euros per kilowatt hour. Only the continuous cycle plants will not be shut down, but they will only have to maintain the technological process. There are two interesting aspects to this. First one is that there are still some production facilities in Lithuania, and the second one, well guys, it's their own fault. What we fought for, we got what we got. The fierce Russophobia necessarily responds with huge financial expenses. When will you finally understand this? And that is a good question. And more from Lithuania, and this is almost kind of like a caricature. Lithuania demands that China lifts the sanctions. Lithuania protested to China in connection with the imposition of sanctions by Beijing due to the visit of the Lithuanian Deputy Minister for Transport to Taiwan. Lithuania demands. And I am just laughing. They, I don't know, they taking stupid pills in Lithuania. And more? Lithuanian Foreign Ministry summoned the charge of affairs of China to express outrage. Earlier, Beijing imposed sanctions against Lithuanian Deputy Minister of Transport because of her visit to Taiwan. China also announced a termination of any cooperation with Lithuania in the field of transport and communications. The Lithuanian Foreign Ministry pointed out that such unilateral decisions of China are groundless, violate international law and the sovereignty of Lithuania, and demanded to cancel these decisions. And I have to say what a fuck. So China is doing unilateral sanctions and what is Europe doing? No, stupid people must suffer. And another one from Lithuania. In order to combat high electricity prices the authorities began to periodically turn off the lights in large inter institutions and supermarkets. This is not a symbolic act. We are seriously considering the idea of a complete shutdown from 18 to 19 hours, when the cost of electricity on the stock exchange is especially high. Euronews quotes its source. Can you believe it? But let's put package number 8 together. Some exalted bloody clowns that are periodically popping up over there with some statements and are even trying to threaten us. I mean an attack on Crimea and so on should be aware that the consequences of such an action would be severe for them, the Russian official said. Now that was Medvedev that made that statement. And Ukraine better start listening. According to Medvedev, in case something like that happens, the day of judgment will come to them all simultaneously, a swift and hard one. 
The former president added that it will be very difficult to hide should Russia launch such a massive strike. He noted that despite these risks, the Ukrainian leadership is continuing to provoke the overall situation with such statements. And then there's this one from Medvedev, and I'm sure it is disturbing for some EU officials. From, the three, from three quarters to 90% of EU citizens categorically do not want to participate in hostilities on the side of the Kiev regime. Although, judging by the sociological survey, this is still not ruled out by moronic European politicians. And anti-Russian sanctions are not ready, really, they are ready to support more than half. And in some states, even two-thirds of the inhabitants. Moreover, support is offered purely at your own personal expense. Moreover, all this nonsense from saving on cremation of bodies to washing toilet paper in order to punish the distant, dense Russia, which did not harm any of the EU citizens with its operation in Ukraine. And the inhabitants finally begins to think, why should we pay for other people's sins? Well, I don't know where this is going, but one thing is for sure, the European citizens are going to suffer. And then we have this. Here they are, NATO soldiers. We are tired of fighting with them. Give us normal opponent so that he is courageous, so that we can tell our grandchildren how terrible and dangerous he was. And what's that? Who is this? How to tell grand grandchildren about them. And look at those images. Shocking. So that's why the Ukrainian Zazis want to blow up the nuclear plant. A strike on Zo Zaporizhia nuclear plant would be a violation of Article 5 of the NATO Charter on Collective Defense, says the British MP Tobias Elwood and a member of the US House of Representatives Adam Kissinger. The radiation leak, according to parliamentarians, threatens the population of NATO member countries. Therefore, it will put the forces of the alliance in combat mode. And he is talking absolute shit. For a start, Ukraine is not a NATO member. Secondly, it is the Ukrainian forces that is bombing that installation there. And then, I've got news for him on that Article 5. I did a skid mark on Article 5. Must go and take a look. And then there's the tweet from this Elwood. Any deliberate damage causing potential radiation leak to Ukraine, Ukraine nuclear reactor would be a breach of NATO's Article 5. And that is exactly why they are supporting Zelensky to bomb that nuclear plant so that they can try this shit. But I've got news for them. Russia will flatten whatever is left of NATO now in a very short, brutal war. Because first of all, NATO in Europe is out of equipment, they're out of ammunition, they have disarmed themselves. And I read an article and listened to a debate where the guy said that if America wants to fight a ground war against Z uh, Russia in Europe, it will take them 18 months to two years to build up their forces and their equipment there. And then this from the Russian Defense Minister Shoigu. Russia is fighting NATO in Ukraine. Ukrainian losses are massive. Operations of Ukrainian armed forces are planned in Washington and London. Orders to attack the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant were given in the UK and USA. That is dangerous. That the people should take note. And more from NATO. This is what NATO did to this man. NATO took Gaddafi out. And just read on this graphic all the things that he gave his people. Free healthcare, free electricity, interest-free loans, newlyweds received $50,000 to find a home, mothers received $5,000 on birth of a child, citizens received a percentage of all oil sales and petrol was 14 cents per liter, government paid 50% of the price of your car, unemployed Libyans received the average salary for their profession in benefits. This is what he gave his people. Yes, he was a dictator. Yes, it was not a full democracy. Was it really necessary to kill him 
and plunge Libya into chaos that is still running rampant today. That is how the West brings democracy. And then we've got this. NATO increases presence in Kosovo. The NATO-led Kosovo force has increased its patrols of the northern part of the province amid ongoing tensions between Belgrade and Pristina. And they just keep on with their shit. And they will carry on until there's a war again. But they must be very aware of the fact Russia has clearly said they will support Serbia. So it's not going to be a one-way street like it was previously. And then we've got this sobering thing. Why is this not publicly addressed? Black Americans are 13.4% of the US population, but we commit 52.4% of homicides, 78% of drugs-related crime, 93% of black murders, 70% of violent crimes. Yes, good question. And then we've got this. Germany has a disgusting white majority society. And this woman is part of the Greens party in Germany. The German people better wake up. They are going to be diluted until there are no more white people left in Germany. That is the mission of the WEF. No white cultures. And then this one takes the cup. Could have been a what a fuck. This is definitely a war on white men and this bitch should be the first to go. We need a castration lottery for white men. Every month we pull a birthday, sort the excess and snip some sacks. Preferably in the big public gathering. This is a New York Times editor. I don't know what happened. Why have men in general, why are they just reading this shit and do nothing about it? A hundred years ago, she would have been out on a tree limb, if you ask me. And then we've got this one. Must be embarrassing to be part of a population that never created, designed, engineered, designed, discovered or invented anything, but choose to steal everything from those that did and still be arrogant and insulting to those that did. Some thugs will never understand. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a wide sweeping generalization, but... There's a lot of truth in that, especially if you tie it back to that statistics that were mentioned earlier. And then we come back to the Russia hate. The steel to the liberators of Riga was dismantled tonight in Dreilen on the border with the Rupatsi region. It was from this place that the 12th Guards and 212th Rifle Division began the liberation of capital of Latvia from not. Zatsi invaders in October 1944. And they just keep on dismantling. They, they are acting like real barbarians. And I thought barbarians was limited to Africa. Estonia will reburial the remains of Soviet soldiers from inappropriate places. The authorities declared it inappropriate to find graves in places where people are moving. What the fuck is Greece, Cyprus, together with Portugal, opposed the ban on the entry of Russians into the EU. Germany also did not support the initiative. The madness just continues. And then Soigu responded. Banning all Russians from entering EU countries is the embodiment of Zazi policies. Many Ukrainians don't agree with banning everything Russian, and Ukraine striking their own Azov POWs in Yelenovka detention center was an attempt by Kiev to cover up their Zazi crimes. Russian and Russian Defense Minister Shoigu at the first international anti-fascist congress. That's interesting. And then this. Some clever Britain politician, British politician, Russia has no moral right to sit at the G20, says Britain. And then the Russian embassy responds, after conducting illegal wars in Yugoslavia, Iraq, Libya and Syria, UK does not have moral right to question Russia's membership of G20. The UK is really cruising for a bruising. And then we've got this one. Authorities in Vilnius, Lithuania approved dismantling of a memorial to Soviet soldiers at Atakalna Cemetery. Removal scheduled for September. And I just continue. And then here's just a little bit of information about Russia. You can pause the video if you want to read through all of that. I found it quite interesting. 
And then we get to the for real what the fuck is this? Australian bank announces it will ban loans for petrol or diesel cars in order to fight climate change and encourage electric vehicles. How the fuck is they, they going to work that? There are a few problems. It is quite clear that the lithium needed for the batteries of these cars is not, there is not enough, not close to enough. Plus, where does the electricity come from to power these cars? This is madness. Somebody needs to stop this. The only reason they want us in electric cars is because they can control those fucking things remotely. In any case, like, share, subscribe and all that jazz and thank you for supporting me.